Hi everyone, this is Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, and we're here live on the floor of Jenkins World. Happy to be joined by Rutesh Shah, CEO of InfoStretch. Great, great to be with you. Hi. Great to be here. So Rutesh, InfoStretch is a, I don't know how many of my uh, listeners have, have heard of InfoStretch, but you guys have really grown into a, a major provider of DevOps consulting, right. training, services, nationwide if not worldwide it's worldwide yes, it's, it it's is worldwide. Worldwide. It is worldwide actually i think i spoke to your EM, EMEA yeah. person yes right. so big news for you guys here at the show is you announced the jenkins training jenkins training another plugin to jenkins to convert the free floating jobs uh, to the pipeline using a plugin how is the Jen let's talk a little bit about jenkins training it would seem to me as easy as they want to make it it's not the kind of thing you do without training you know, Jenkins, if you see the whole DevOps phenomena, it's all a lot of technology and engineering involved. Um, and the traditional operations guys, if they wanted to get trained into the automation of the processes, they always thought that after everything is developed, it's their responsibility starts. What DevOps does is brings them together with development team and brings development and testing and security and others with the operations team. So this training kind of becomes very critical to make sure that this cross-boundary pollination that has to happen, happens. Sure. So it's a technology training, plus I think uh, Cloud Beach has put good efforts to make sure that really qualified people get certified. Yes. Right, and so uh, I think training is a big thing. If you're not trained properly, you might not be able to achieve the automation. Well, but you know something, Ritesh, is an interesting thing. I was talking to a CEO, not of a vendor, of a, a, a company, mm -hmm. and he was he was telling me how hard it is to hire DevOps people. He said it's not this, it's not that there aren't a lot of people out there who claim to be DevOps. DevOps. <laughs> you come to their resume and they know everything. They know Jenkins. They know Puppet. They know Chef. Yeah. They know everything. And then you find out they really know nothing, right? They, and because. We don't, at this point, we haven't really matured in certification and training, right? right? Everybody is self-taught. And when you're self-taught, there's, there's no standard. Yeah. So if you see, you know, I think we as a company, we started with DevOps three years ago. And we really invested in making sure our engineers understand this so-called umbrella term DevOps, mm -hmm. right? Because what is DevOps in our eyes? DevOps is anything that helps you to automate any process in software development lifecycle. Right. So that you can make it predictable and repeatable, right? It could be your development related activities, it could be unit testing, it could be your normal testing, it could be operations, it could be security. So now, how do you train someone with this? You have to really give them the umbrella view of your methodology and say, okay, if you're at this level, this is your maturity. If you're at this level, this is your maturity. And so we came up with working with CloudBase, the whole maturity model uh, that, that helps them understand that any organization who wants to traverse to the DevOps path and in the maturity path, these are the things that they have to do. And I think that is the critical element. You're not going to find that kind of talent just off the street because no. it's a new thing. And you know, in our own customer base, we have 58 customer base, uh, about 58 customers that we work with. Uh, we really have to go and inspire them to do the real DevOps. Most of them kind of claim that they do it, but when they really start talking, they're the maturity level one. Yeah. Right. So. The overall option would be, would be about 10 to 12% at the most, the real DevOps, right? You have some clients really gone to the maturity level two or three. So the key is you're not going to be able to find people in the field. You really have to commit to it. It takes time. It takes commitment from management and your infrastructure team to make things happen before you really get the real DevOps team in place. Right? And it's a cultural shift. It is. Everywhere is going to be a big cultural shift. Right. And, and you know what else, Tesh? The numbers you're citing are just, I, we just did a survey with Vericode. It was around training for DevOps and DevSecOps. It just came out. Mm -hmm. and, and those numbers are pretty much right, right It has there. to be high. Yeah, no, that, that's where they are. And I think what it is, is we, we sometimes forget. Because we live in a DevOps bubble. Right? Yeah. Everyone you know is doing DevOps and, and because it's, it's what we deal with. Mm. Really, we forget just how small that bubble really is in terms of the wider world out there. Now, I'm an optimist. To me, that says, oh, what an opportunity. You know? It's a big opportunity. It's a big opportunity. 
we're just in the tip of the iceberg right now if you see it i think if 10 percent of organizations have really started becoming mature the remaining 90 percent will see those and very quickly adopt this transition platform right only or, only if they see the other 10 have an advantage and i think that you know that goes like i i had jez humble and nicole forsgren here earlier and I spoke to the electric cloud people about something they have out called DevOps Insights. I see a big push towards going where where we can quantify the advantages, the advantages of the DevOps. Benefits. Because that's what will get that other 90%. And you have to not only do it to the technology or IT organization, you have to also do that to the business organization. Yeah. Because they currently kind of at loss. Everything is working. Why all of a sudden we are re-architecting everything? Right? Yeah. Or because you want to go to digital, every two weeks you want to release it. These are the foundation elements for those. If you don't do it, if you don't invest into backlog test automation, you're not going to be able to get there. And and so we, in our consulting engagement first week, we spend on just educating customers. And we actually demand that not only technology guys, but the business guys also sit into these discussions. Understood. Right? <laughs> so, you, your infrastructure is a big cloud beast partner. Um, you've been at a few of these... Jenkins world. This is our third, I believe. Yeah. This is mine too. This is this is way bigger though, yes? It is much bigger. I think uh, much bigger, much louder, much noisier. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, our microphones are good. They work. We don't have no, to worry I, about I that. Know, but. What I've seen here, the because of the engineers and the DevOps uh, people that are coming here, they're interested in t getting every bit that they can. Yeah. Even during the lunch hour, you'll see them eating sandwich and but, kind of clouding around and and listening to Networking, the presentations. Talking, so it's a great community. I love yeah. it. I love to come here. There's a lot of learning for us. Uh, my um, humble beginning happened with DevOps when I came to the first conference four years ago. Really? Okay. And we said, we are in test automation. DevOps is the next big thing. And so last three years, we've been repeatedly coming here and we're committed to continue to grow with uh, CloudBees. You know, I was talking to KK earlier. And one of the observations, and again, I, I don't have metrics for this, but it, my, my gut is telling me, in talking to a lot of people on the floor, that not only do we have more people, mm -hmm. but the level of people, their level of Jenkins understanding, their level of DevOps understanding. You know how sometimes like you serve it with a help desk, you got level one, level two, level three. Mm -hmm. These are all level, level two three and guys. level three <laughs> guys, guys, right? You don't see a lot of the level one people right, right. anymore. And I think that's the biggest difference. And I think that's what this training that CloudBees rolled out two, two years back and then started maturing it has started kind of coming to play. Everybody has done bits and pieces, but it's, this is a big ocean, right? Yes, I mean, is. if you see it from tools perspective, it's big ocean, processes, how you're automating it, what are the frameworks you're using it. I can't even keep track of the names of the tools and technologies. Uh, that are now popping up almost every other day in open yeah, source no, community. Right? So we did a great thing. You know, I would I would ask people here to stop by at our booth, but you know, who doesn't like Game of Thrones these days? Yeah. So we came up with the concept of Game of Thrones and put the whole map out and put all I've the tools. Seen this. So we have it in one of my slides. Yeah, all the tools into the, those the things. Seven right? kingdoms of, of exactly. DevOps. DevOps. Yes. <laughs> I did, it's a great, because that's it's how a people great are going to adopt it. You know, these are the yeah. tools that you have. It falls into this bucket. It doesn't fall into that bucket. You know, try to but, use it in a wise way. There's a lot way. of that education, but like you said, there's a tremendous opportunity. It's a great there. opportunity. Yes. Yep. Anyway, last thing before you go, I need you to look into one of these sure. two cameras. This one. Okay. And for our audience out there who wasn't lucky enough to come to the Jenkins World this year, why should they come next year? Oh. Um, Jenkins World, at least three years I've been here, it has grown, I think, dramatically, right? Both in terms of number of people attending it, plus the kind of quality of people that you get to kind of mingle and collaborate with, right? And I expect that Jenkins with the pipeline architecture has really cultivated this new culture of all these tools and technology in DevOps that will keep coming. This will continue to become a pipeline. And I think, I believe this conference is actually a pipeline that if you come here, you get to attach to so many other things, not only Jenkins and Jenkins plugins, but so many other things that you need to know. Uh, and I think uh, th the sessions are real life experience yes, sessions. So I would, I would uh, highly, highly recommend people to come to this conference. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ritesh Thanks, Alan. Shah, CEO, InfoStretch, here at Jenkins World. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com and DevOps TV. Thanks, everyone.